Hello guys, I hope you are all well. Today we are going to take a look at my giant ant farm once again. For in my last video, I asked if you guys wanted me to open up this hidden box. And to my surprise, there was an overwhelming response from people wanting to see what was in it. So today, we are going to crack it open and see what lurks inside. So before we actually take the lid off of the hidden box, we need to disconnect it from the setup. This makes the lid more accessible for me and it is easier to collect any escaping ants. Let's just hope that when I do open this lid, I don't get bitten. I am wearing some military grade ant protection, but even with this armour, large major workers still manage to bite into my skin and it's generally not very pleasant because they don't really let go. Anyway, let's start by disconnecting these two pieces of tubing which act like gateways into the hidden box. I managed to walk away this time without any bites, but as you can see, the ants in the tubing and the hidden box are now very agitated. So I think I'll be wearing gloves from this point on where needed. Okay, now that the hidden box is completely disconnected from the setup, we can now remove it. For this delicate procedure, I have created a workspace that is specific for the task at hand. On the left, we have our containment zone. This is where the hidden box will be placed and opened. Obviously ants will pour out of this box uncontrollably, so I have taken some anti-escape measures. Inside the ring of the containment zone, we have a thick coating of anti-ant formula. This is basically a mixture of baby powder and a liquid with a strong alcohol content. These ants can't walk on it, when it is pasted onto a vertical surface. So I guess we will just have to see how it does on a horizontal surface. On the right hand side, we have an empty container where we will be placing all of our ants. This has also been coated with the same anti-ant formula. If in the small chance that ants do escape, we do have security dogs on site, which will be able to chase them down and bring them back to the setup. Anyway, <laughs> it is time to put this hidden box in our containment zone to see what is inside. I firstly have to remove a layer of sellotape that is keeping the glass lid fixed on the hidden box. Now it is time for the great unveiling. As we open up the lid, large major workers quickly move to the surface of the soil as a defensive stance against any trespassers. I quickly take the lid off of the box and over to our container to brush off any ants clinging onto it. But as I have my back turned, ants start to pour over the lip of the box and into our containment area. Because a lot of loose substrate dropped onto our anti-escape formula, ants are now running freely over it. I rush to frantically get the ants away from the containment area and into our plastic container. It all seems to be going well until... Ah! Oh my god! Oh! Ow! Oh. Yes, a large and powerful major worker had managed to not only cause me pain by biting through my finger, but she managed to slice through the thick rubber glove I was wearing. After putting her in the plastic container with her sisters, I decided to temporarily close the hidden box to then pop what ants I had collected into one of the foraging areas. 
Now comes the really hard part of this procedure. Having managed to catch the ants on the surface of the soil, it was now time to start sieving out the ants that were hiding under it. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can, as when I start to move the soil, it will start to shift and caving the ants. For this next part, I have got an additional plastic container where I will scoop the ants and dirt, then ant by ant, I will place them into the larger container with the anti-ant formula. Okay, let's do this. After thoroughly checking through the soil for ants, if there aren't any left, I then dispose of the unwanted substrate. While scooping out the old soil, I start to find old remnants of the colony's first founding, like old test tubes and caps. I had thought that I had finally sieved out all of the ants, until I lifted up an old rock in the setup and uncovered a large pocket of ants. They suddenly started storming to the top of the tank, some of them even making it over and into the containment zone. I worked as fast as I could to swiftly put the ants into the plastic container. And when the dust cleared, I had realised how many ants I had finally placed in my plastic container. As I edged closer and closer to the bottom of the hidden box, it seemed that I was uncovering more and more ants. I even started to collect ants which were carrying very small larvae. Closer and closer, I got to the bottom. With every piece of soil removed, was a step nearer to finishing. At this point, I had been picking up ants and shoveling dirt for about six hours, until I had reached the final layer of the hidden box, the drainage layer. This is essentially a thick weed blanket that was originally placed at the bottom of the tank, so that any fluid could easily drain down and not collect within the soil. At this point, I was feeling pretty happy about myself. I had got nearly all the ants out, and so I had thought, until I lifted up the weed blanket. Hundreds of ants quickly raced out from under the blanket and made a run for the lip of the box. I quickly tried to contain them. I honestly couldn't believe it. There were so many ants. This ended up consuming another two hours of my time. But after hundreds of ant bites, many scoops of dirt, I had finally cleared the box of all of its substrate. I had but one ant left to remove and my task was complete. So if you were wondering what was inside the hidden box, well, to no surprise, it was hundreds of ants. After putting the ants back into the setup, my task was complete. Tune into the next episode with my giant ant farm when we will turn this now barren tank into something epic. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.